Hvad knipser først, eller hvad? Hallo? Ja, yeah, okay, så so, uh, the next uh, speaker is uh, Ruben Barko, mm -hmm. close enough, and he's going to uh, speak about Flyfunk, which is an uh, open mesh network. Yeah. So uh, take it away. Okay, hi. Can you hear me? It works? Okay. <coughs> I, um, yeah, I, I just... Um, Uh, prepared a, a, mo a speech, a small speech. Okay. Yeah. The internet is weak. Yes, yet we keep ignoring this fact. So we see the same thing over and over again, whether it's because of natural disasters, wars, deliberate attempts by the government to shut down the internet, like most recently in Egypt or Iran, or the omnipresent NSA surveillance. Compared to the normal internet, which is based on a few centralized access points or internet service providers, mesh networks have many benefits from architectural to political. Yet they haven't really taken off, even though they have been around for some time. I believe it's time to reconsider their potential and make mesh networking a reality, not just because of its obvious benefits, but also because it provides an inter internet native model for building community and governance. But first the basics. At an ad hoc network, uh, mesh networks are ad, ad hoc networks, an ad hoc, ad hoc network infrastructure that can be set up by anyone. Mesh networks connect computers and devices wirelessly directly to each other without b passing through any central authority or centralized organization like a phone company or an ISP. They can automatically reconfigure themselves according to the availability and proximity of bandwidth, storage and so on. This is what makes them resilient to central control authority, disaster and other interference. Dynamic connections between nodes enable packets to use multiple routes to travel through the network, which makes these networks more robust. Compared to more centralized network architectures, the only way to shut down a mesh network is to shut down every single node in the network. That is the vital feature and what makes it stronger in some ways that the, than the regular internet. But mesh networks aren't just for political upheavals or natural disasters. Many have been installed as part of humanitarian programs aimed at helping poor neighborhoods and underserved areas for people who can't afford to pay for an internet connection or don't have access to a proper communications infrastructure. Mesh networks provide the, the basic infrastructure for connectivity. Not only do mesh networks represent a cheap and efficient means for people to connect and communicate to a broader community, but they provide us with a choice for what kind of internet we want to use and want to have. For these concerned about the erosions of online privacy and anonymity, anonymity mesh networking represents a way to preserve the confidentiality of online communications. Given the lack of a central regulating authority, it's extremely difficult for anyone to assess the real identity of users connected to these networks. And because networks, mesh networks are generally invisible to the internet, the only way to mo monitor such a mesh traffic is to be locally and directly connected to them. Yet beyond, beyond those benefits, the real power of mesh networking is the social impact. It could have on the way communities form and operate. 
And what's really revolutionary about mesh networking isn't the novel use of technology, it's the fact that it provides a mean for people to self-organize into communities and share resources amongst themselves. Mesh networks are operated by the community for the community. Mesh networks provide an internet as it is, as it was, meant to be, right from the beginning. I think it has been done, I think it has been done with Freifunk in Germany and GuifiNet in Spain. More mesh networks need to be developed by independent companies. Mesh networks have many benefits from architectural to political time to take off. This is what I'm, uh, yeah, what, what I want to tell you. So um, I want to um, find some people here and um, that are interested and um, are willing to open up a mesh network in Denmark. And I could show you the the way we did it in Germany with Freifunk. We have um, several. Uh, yeah, we have a complete plan how to do it and to build up the community. It's not so much work. I think it could be, could be done in a few hours, maybe it uh, could be started in a few hours. And um, I would like to show you the main, the main um, problems and the main scripts you need to use to install the software and start the services you need to um, get up a community here in Denmark maybe. So that's the plan for, I, w I want to do a workshop tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock. And yeah, your question? <laughs> what if, uh, let's say you have um, a group of uh, people that started a mess network and, and they, uh, they, they use your internet line, you know, it's, it's spread out through all the internet lines, right? Um, for all those who, uh, who is in this, uh, in this mesh. Okay, um, how it works. Uh, I can explain how it, how it works. In, in, um, yep, well for example, in, in, in a community in my town, in Kiel, yeah. we, have, um, we have a few servers. You, you only need one server. One server that um, serves as a gateway. Yes. Um, which is the only point that at the moment it's centralized, but it's, it can be decentralized easily and you can use more servers. So you need one server. And all um, Freifunk, all, all um, mesh network nodes, yeah. they connect first to each other. All nodes that can see each other in, in Wi-Fi range, they connect to each other. Yes. And um, also some nodes, y you can connect them to the internet where they build up a VPN tunnel to the server. Yeah. And okay. through this server, all nodes in the town or in the com in the community are connected virtually yes. with each other. So it's one big network yes. then. But let's say um, a person A is using the internet through this mesh, um, or do does they uh, go around the, the mesh when, when they want to access the normal internet? Yeah, if someone uh, wants to use this network now with his client, with his mo mobile phone or something, yeah. He can access, he can just connect to this, um, to the Wi-Fi mesh network, yeah. like any other and network. You can, you can just see an open network there, and you can connect to this with our password, yes. and then you're in the network. And if you walk around, and you get out of range of the node where you were connected to, and there is another node that s sends out the same network, then it roams to the next node, so yeah. you're but always connected then. But my question is, if if someone were to go on to Google, uh, but they're connected to connected to the mesh network, it would it would just find some access to the internet through this. Yes. Right. Um, what would you do to uh, regulate that kind of access? I mean, if if somebody who's in the community or accessing this uh, mesh is doing something con that's considered illegal, how would you make make sure that wouldn't uh, come back to to harm? to reflect on your network or your... Uh, ah, access. okay, on this network. Yeah, um, yeah if someone m does some 
uh, violation of law or something yes. um, through the, uh, in from inside the network, then the the that's the standard question. Yes, the, the first concern everybody has. Then um, visible to the to the um, to the endpoint is only the IP of the 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 server, the the y, the, the mesh server, yes. the the online server that I talked uh, yes, that I set up, and this person that is that is uh, managing this server is responsible for everything everybody does in the whole town okay. and that's not um, that's um, uh, that's one detail that I would explain tomorrow also but um, uh, if to, to get around this we use uh, um, anonym anonymization like Tor yeah hide I, oh, hide me or something Wait a second. VPN exits. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Christian. I'm from Freifunk, uh, Germany too, and uh, we um, use a VPN exit in the uh, in other countries, for example, in the Sweden or in uh, uh, in the Netherlands, um, where there is no um, you know, so kind of logging, and um, that is uh, every Freifunk. Um, um, router connects to our gateways and um, the gateway transfer all the traffic to that VPN exit um, so the uh, local um, yeah the local provider for example as you for example isn't uh, able I, we are not able to um, they cannot be de backtracked to, to get your IP address so if if I do some if I download some music or something from your uh, local node you haven't been um, localized because it's not possible. But uh, did, uh, sorry, this is uh, Jakob, uh, the cameraman. Actually, um, this problem is not uh, particular to Freifunk because it's exactly the same problem. If you run and tour exit node, the police will come knocking on your door and say, "Why did you do this?" And uh, as far as I know, you can tell the police that. Sorry, guys, this is an exit node from the Tor network. We have no logs, we don't know who did it, and we have no way of, of knowing who did it. Exactly. Uh, but if, if you cannot trace back through the mesh network to the originating uh, host, uh, then you cannot tell them who did the download of this illegal file or, exactly. or who threatened somebody or other horrible, horrible things. Yes, and we don't have any logs, so... We just don't know, and, and this is all. This is all legal. It's all, all applying to the law, and there's no trick. This, it's all just technique that is allowed, and that's just there. <laughs> but but did, uh, did you actually have? Uh, you say you use VPN, but you, did you actually ever uh, encounter law enforcement in in your work with Freifunk? Have you ever uh, have had the actual problem? No, we couldn't because we uh, we always use the VPN. So. So you didn't dare to test it? We didn't test it, no. no. We didn't want to, but uh, probably we w there wouldn't be any problem either. In Denmark, I think there wouldn't be any problem. So in Germany, the laws at the moment is quite, uh, yeah, un <laughs> how do you say in English? Uh, unangenehm. <laughs> and um, uh, inconvenient law in Germany that everybody has is, is responsible for everything someone does over his internet connection, uh, which is stupid. Uh, but you don't have this problem here in Denmark, so um, that wouldn't be a problem anyway. Sorry? I, be I believe that we are responsible for what's going on on our internet line. Okay, so if you have the same problem here, then uh, in case in Denmark it's the same problem, then there you could use the same logic like we did in Germany to be safe and n not backtraceable. And it's it's also it's not like that this would be some that w that someone could say that that uh, it's all legal so it, it doesn't matter you can just do it. In Denmark, you have to lock the data if you got them. So if you do not collect the data for yourself, you don't have to lock them. So okay. if you uh, you operate a hotspot and you do not have the equipment to lock anything, you're not obligated to lock it. Okay, so it's better so than in Germany. Yeah. yeah. Mm. In Germany, we also um, have the situation that um, some 
uh, Freifunk communities have uh, registered uh, themselves as an ISP, um, but um, in a way that they are um, not yeah, are responsible for, no, not responsible, um, they don't have to make logs um, because in Germany when you um, do it for free, so um, like an NGO, for example, uh, you don't have to store any logs or uh, customer um, data, so it's even not possible to to uh, to, yeah, to say where uh, um, s what is happening, <coughs> what has happened. So um, maybe that's uh, um, a possibility for for Denmark to to get get some the ISP and uh, be uh, mm. for free, for example. So so uh, any more questions? Yeah, I want to show you something. Um, we put up a small mesh network here on this campsite. <laughs> That's what this um, video is about. Um, here you see um, a th we're sitting right here, right now. I, am, I use my, sh my shadow. <laughs> um, and I think the main Wi-Fi is coming from, from this roof and spreading all over the campsite. So um, our caravan is up here, and we we uh, catched up the campsite network here with a router and connected a, a mesh net node to that router, and this mesh node is going um, is connecting to all other mesh nodes in its reach. So we positioned one here on the roof of the toilet, and one is sitting here on the table. And now the whole campsite is filled with Freifunk at the moment. <laughs> you can connect to it with your Wi-Fi if you have a look on it. I called it, at the moment um, I, I thought about a name that it could be in Denmark maybe Freemesh. Free dot dk <laughs> so i call it free not uh, you see it there <laughs> Which, uh, you uh. um, this is one of the routers which has a, just a battery pack on it at the moment so it works also with battery yeah. this is one of the cheapest uh, routers from tp link which also uh, which also already suffices the the needs for Freifunk. Uh, it's just a 15 euro router and um, it's called, um, I forgot the name, TLWR841N. <laughs> yeah. um, this would be the cheapest solution but it's a bit, um, if, if you want to use this on your home to connect it to your internet to get internet access to the mesh network, it's a bit slow. So um, the, the next one, the next bigger one that is really fast would be uh, about 35 euro. And um, yeah, we have the one on the, on the toilet is also the same like this. And the one on top of the hill is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, a, a router that goes into one direction mainly. Uh, it's called CPE 210. Yeah. So one more question. These mesh these uh, mesh networks are they uh, layer two or layer three networks? Sorry. Are they layer two or layer three networks? These networks. How many networks? No, we it's if it's layer two or layer three. Ah, it's um. It's uh, still on layer two. Uh, we use um. In Kiel, we use a, a firmware called Gluon, and uh, Gluon is uh, using Batman. Batman is the mesh control protocol, and that's uh, on layer two. So that's uh, the state at the moment. But there are also some layer three implementations already, but uh, I didn't try them out. I'm more into um, organizing and building up the, yeah flashing nodes and <laughs> telling people about it and I don't know how to program the the, the layers. <laughs> so one more question. 
Um, could you tell something about how you'll get into this or how you help uh, if you mm -hmm. cannot participate tomorrow? I would like to participate, but I'm doing a talk tomorrow at 10. Mm -hmm. how, what to do? My plan for tomorrow? Um, yeah, that would be um, showing you the... Uh, no, you misunderstood. I, I can't be there tomorrow. Yeah, okay. I would like still to participate. How c could one do that? We can uh, use more time. We can also, if I don't know what's happening after this, we can also do some stuff after uh, yeah, this afternoon, if you like. I, I'm free. <laughs> I don't know. That, I think there are no, no, no more talks at the moment. Yeah. So um, if you like, we can sit together and do some stuff right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, no more questions. Uh, super. Uh, give. I, uh, I stay here, and yeah, you can come to the tables. Yeah. Give uh, Ruben a big hand, and uh, <laughs> he'll stay afterwards, and you can uh, talk about mission networks. Okay. Um, there's a small uh, gift for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, I don't know what it is, but it might be nice. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See the riddle. <laughs>